everybody. I hope you're having a great week. We have a ton of new books this week, so you can either listen to them all straight through, or if you want to click in the description box and click directly on just the titles that you're interested in, you can jump right to those. This is an awesome mystery, fantasy, not really sure what to call it. It's the story of Lucas and his brother Aiden. And at the beginning of the book, Aiden has been gone for six days and no one, not his brother, not his parents, not the police, have any idea where he is. It's all over the news. And then suddenly Lucas is at home and he hears a sound coming from the attic. He goes in there and he finds his brother. And everyone's super excited and happy to see him at first, but then they wonder, well, where the heck were you? And so he tells them that he went into the attic, he opened up a dresser drawer, stumbled, fell into the drawer, and to another dimension. And of course, nobody believes him. They're actually pretty concerned about his state of mind at that point. So when he goes to school, he makes up a totally brand new story, knowing that no one's going to believe him. And then word gets out about that brand new story and everybody starts to get really angry at him for making that up in the first place. Even his parents don't understand why he'd create such a strange lie about being gone for so long. But Aiden sees that his brother is distraught and he starts to think that he might be telling the truth about this other dimension. And he's the only one that believes him. So the whole time you're wondering what's really going on with Aiden and if there really is another dimension that he disappeared to. And it's interesting to see how his parents react, how the town reacts, but especially how Lucas reacts. And the ending is pretty magical. I know that many of you love Alan Gratz's books. Refugee is probably one of our number one checked out titles. He writes these action-packed stories that are usually based on historical events and switch between multiple characters. Ground Zero is all about 9-11. We meet two characters, Brandon, who's going to work with his dad um, because he got in some trouble at school. He's, his dad works on the 107th floor of the World Trade Center, and the date is September 11th, 2001. So I'm sure you can guess where this is going. We also meet Rashmina, who lives in war-torn Afghanistan in September 11th, 2019, 18 years after 9-11. So she's dealing with the Taliban, with American soldiers, and fights that break out between the two. During one of those fights, there's an American soldier that's injured, asks for her help, and she just can't say no, even when her brother threatens to tell the Taliban. It's a thrilling and heartbreaking story, and if you've ever heard your families talk about 9-11 and what they remember from that day, but you couldn't really understand the impact, this might help you too. I think many of you are really going to love this book. If you want more Alan Gratz style books, those historical fiction dramas, you'll like this one. It's heavy on the action. It's during World War II and the Nazis have been bombing London, so 13-year-old Ken is looking for a way out of there. He gets a place on a ship that's taking a bunch of others around his age off to safety in Canada. And it starts off amazing. They're getting well fed, they're making friends. It's so much better than conditions were at home. But five days in, the ship is torpedoed and sinks. Luckily, Ken is able to crawl to safety onto light, Lifeboat 12 with about five other boys. And this is a based on a true story and it's an amazing story of survival. Some of you may already know the amazing I Survive series, which are these fictional retellings of major historical disasters. Now there are some graphic novel editions and this one may complement what some of our eighth graders are currently studying. In I Survive the Nazi Invasion, Max and his sister Zena struggle to get by after their father is captured by the Nazis. Luckily, they're able to escape into a nearby forest and they're found by some Jewish, Jewish resistance fighters who take them to a safe camp. And they think they're all in the clear until suddenly grenades start falling and they find themselves in the middle of an invasion that they hope to survive. All right, Babysitter's Club fans, we've got a couple new ones for you this week. In Claudia and the New Girl, we meet Ashley. 
And on the outside, Ashley is even artsier than Claudia. She's got piercings, she wears hippie clothes, but the two really think that the other's art is amazing. And when Ashley tells Claudia that she's wasting her talent by spending all her time babysitting instead of focusing on her art, Claudia is torn. She starts missing meetings and her friends feel really let down. Pretty soon it's clear she's gonna have to make a decision between art and Ashley and her best friends and babysitting. We also have Karen's Worst Day, which is one of the Babysitter's Little Sisters series. And it's pretty much just like it sounds. Karen's having a rough one. Her jeans are missing. Her cat won't play with her. She didn't even get a prize in her cereal box. Check it out if you're having a bad day and you need someone to commiserate with. Um, and I hope it all turns around. This is a good one for the sports fans. MJ's been having a tough time. Her dad left. Her mom's been forced to work an extra job. She was on the gymnastics team, but because she was getting bullied, even though she was the best one, she decided to quit. She's not really making friends at school, and instead, during lunch, she sits and watches videos of luchadoras, which are Mexican wrestlers who wear masks and they wrestle like entertainers. And one day she's out flying the drone that her father left behind and it crashes into her neighbor's yard. She goes to get it and she discovers an old wrestling ring. It turns out her neighbor who is actually uh, a former lucha wrestler and now owns a training school. So MJ talks her mom into letting her join and she gets pulled into this incredible competitive group of girls who become this really powerful force. And no matter what sport you play, I think you're really going to love Bump. Cast in Firelight is the first of a fantasy, new fantasy duology about two young heirs. Adra is a powerful young witch and Yatin is a powerful wizard. Their parents long ago agreed that the two would be married in order to unite their two very powerful kingdoms. But these two guys have very different plans. They haven't seen each other since childhood, and when their parents decide it's time for them to come home and meet, they actually do meet before they get home on the way, unknowingly. And they get trapped in this mystery that they have to solve together. But because of the situation, they both have to conceal their identities, even from one another, so that they get to know the other's personality without knowing their true names, and they have to depend on one another in order to survive. It's a fantasy with some witty banter that makes for a good little romance as well. This is the fourth in the Bookish Boyfriend series, which follows the same cast of characters through different retellings, reimaginings of famous works of literature. In this one, Huck and Winston's English teacher assigns the class to read Sherlock Holmes, just as a real life mystery is starting to percolate around the school. When someone tries to sabotage Wynn's transfer application and his reputation, Huck tries to channel his inner Sherlock Holmes to help him out. And he can't help but notice that he's starting to develop some feelings for him as well. It's a cute, sweet mystery and a romance. Not Your Sidekick follows Jess as she tries to figure out how to be the daughter of superheroes and superstar siblings without feeling like she's just living in their shadow. So she goes and she tries to find um, something that she can be good at. She finds an internship that sounds amazing, even more amazing when she discovers that her crush Abby is working there. But then she learns that the company is actually run by super villains, her parents' enemies. And she decides to keep quiet about it for a while until she and Abby uncover a very dark secret and they're drawn into a mystery that the two of them have to solve together. If you've heard of the Me Too movement but aren't sure exactly what it means, this book will help you to understand. It covers how to set healthy boundaries in your relationships through really detailed examples and scenarios of what's acceptable and what shouldn't be. It's an informative, interesting, and empowering read.